Okay, it's loading. Okay, I see your slide now. Great. We have a couple minutes till your official start time, but do you, do you want to go ahead and get started early? I can, sure thing. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. All right, um, let me just finish my setup here. Okay, I'm going to start recording again in just a second, and then you can start your presentation. So I am recording now. Hello there, everyone, and welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I am the Stock Swoosh Show. We're starting a little bit early today. I'm sure you've had a very interesting day listening to all the speakers. Market's closing in a few minutes. Very, very volatile market. We drop, we rally, we drop again, we fake higher. It's been a very interesting couple of days. Short week for the market. Today we're going to talk about momentum. We're also going to talk about technical analysis and we're going to talk about gaps, which is the strategy I trade. So gaps, the, the market gapped down today. Tried to go lower, then we rallied. Pretty much stay, stayed in a sideways range for the majority of the day. I'm not sure if anything big is going to happen to the market tomorrow. It could, it might. But I think in the next couple of days, we're really going to see where the market's going to head into the middle of September. What do I mean by that? I mean, we could either follow through with the rally for the last 24 to 48 hours, or we could fail, fail and drop. So the one thing that I focus on and the thing that I think that it's important for traders to do is to make sure that they get in the trade in the right direction. In other words, if you're shorting a stock and it drops, you make money. But if you're shorting something that rallies, guess what? You're going to lose. So the direction is very important. This sounds like a very simple thing, but actually it's one of the reasons why many traders lose. They just don't get the direction their trades right. And I put the chat here on the side. I can see if you want to ask me questions. I can see questions as we go along today. You can feel free to just ask me questions as we're going along and I'm talking. So if you have questions after the fact today, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I also appear on television, and I'm on Fox News, actually scheduled for tomorrow. We're going to talk about markets and the economy. That's one of the things that I do talk about on television. We're in a very political environment. Just so happens, though, that guess what? Politics does affect the market. You're not going to be able to predict every single thing that happens all the time. And you certainly can't predict po political uh, stances or elections or things like that or choices that Congress makes or even the Fed. But I think if you look at what's happening in a chart, and that's what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about charts, you can predict with a high level of certainty where a stock is going to go as far as the direction to take the trade. Does that mean you can make money every single trade that you take? No. Some trades I take lose. Some trades you have to account for the fact that we'll lose. But the idea is to use a system where you make money and you get it right more than you get it wrong. And if you do that, then you can make money. But again, if you have any questions, you can just plop it on the side. So I'm not going to go through all of these trades here today. This is the year-to-day trading results for the trading room, for the live room, so far through. It was, the, it was through last week, through the first day of September. We've had a really good year. I will tell you that I focus mostly on shorts, and we are going to talk about shorts today. This has been a good year to short the market. Uh, first of all, the market has dropped off since the beginning of the year in January, but I actually short and created my system in a bullish market. So you can short in a bullish market, you can short in a bearish market. It's all about the pick. So, so far year to date, this was an average risk of $2,800 per trade. Uh, year to date, we're at $475,451. Again, this has been a good year to capture moves to the downside, and that is what we're going to talk about today. If you take trading seriously, you can do it for a living. If you take it seriously, you can, all right? A half a million dollars a year or more will be at that point. I mean, we've got four more months left to go in the year. That's real income. That is a real job. While I usually trade in the morning into the open between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, I sometimes will trade a little bit later than 10 a.m. But most of the trades, most of the stats that I just showed you, most of those trades were morning trades where we were in and out quickly. But I get up in the morning early and prepare what I want to do. I take it very, very seriously what I do and the choices that I make in my trades. I do not take pot shots. 
I don't go into those free Reddit chat rooms. I have a specific strategy that I use and follow every single day. Again, that's what we're gonna talk about today. But if you're willing to take trading seriously, if you're really willing to commit yourself to doing it, you can make a lot of money trading. What does it depend on? One, your level of risk, okay, how much you make per trade, and two, if you have a good strategy. So these are things that really are very important. But a lot of people question trading. Once they start to do it, they're back and forth. But I say people that are bit with the trading bug, once they start to trade, once they start to do it, once they see the money you can make it so fast, they want to do it. It's sometimes a lack of commitment, the lack of commitment that people have. And then that bodes to be problematic because you can lose money very quickly and very easily if you don't know what to do. So what are some of the reasons that you might want to trade? If you want to make a lot of money with limited time and a controlled amount of risk, if you want to make consistent money, if you want to work in a very short period of time a day, again, many trades that I take them in and out in 5, 10, 15 minutes, okay? And if you're a trader that's been trading, you've been doing this for a while and you don't have a strategy, that may be the reason that you're not making this kind of money. Having a strategy is really gonna help you narrow it down and I call it finding the right pick because that's how you're gonna be consistent, all right? And if you're someone that is working full-time or part-time, or maybe you're retired and you really don't wanna do another full-time job but you'd like some extra income, you know, trading is a good side job. You don't have to work 40 hours a week. The market isn't even open 40 hours a week. Even if you start at 9.30 in the morning and you trade till four every day, that's only six and a half hours a day. And I definitely do not do that, okay? I also trade options. We will talk about a few options trades here today. But overall, the whole point of trading, the whole point of making money, the whole thing that I wanna talk about today is really momentum trading. Momentum trading is just one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. You've got to learn how to take a position in stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. These enormous moves happen in one direction and they can happen very fast, okay? Like you saw in the market last week to the downside, actually. Momentum trading is very profitable and that is how you as one individual trader can actually make a lot of money when you trade. Because let's just say, for example, you have a thousand shares of something. Now, let's say you have 500 shares of something. If you have 500 shares of a stock and you short it at 10 bucks and it drops to $8, you would make what? You get a $2 move, you make $1,000. That is what I consider momentum, okay? A $2 drop in a stock at that price point is momentum. And again, 500 shares is what I consider a low to medium share position sizing. I would not consider that a large position size, okay? And certainly you could make more if you had several thousand shares. So as a day trader, as an active trader, you must have momentum moves to make profit. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're scalping, you're booking small profits in baby, 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 tiny moves, and then trades that you lose in, you're losing full throttle, okay? So then overall, by the end of each week or month or by the end of the year, guess what? You're not up, so that's a problem. The whole idea of trading is to get big moves. And I think a lot of traders right now, particularly, particularly since the June 16th lows we saw in the market, so it was June, July, August, now we're to the beginning of September, traders are not getting big enough moves to the upside or to the downside, meaning they're not holding them properly to get the big enough moves because they lack conviction in what they're supposed to be doing, they lack conviction in a strategy or a system or they don't have one at all, or they lack conviction in their direction. Because again, we've dropped off since the beginning of the year. And I'm talking about the overall general market, but I could be talking about any one specific stock. We do trade the QQQs and the SPY, which is the market ETFs, but I also look at specific stock picks when I make trading decisions too. So. What is the point of day trading though? The real point is to make money. As fun as it is to talk in chat rooms and be involved in a group or just get up in the morning and sit at your computer and dream about all the money you're gonna make, it's not fun if you don't make it, okay? The whole idea is making money. The idea of losing is not fun, okay? And actually, it can be miserable. It can be a miserable experience, all right? You must take trading seriously if you wanna do it as a career. But I honestly think you must take trading seriously if you want to do it at all, all right? 
So what is the point of learning a trading system if you have learned one in the past and failed to make money? Did the system you learned work? This is something important you gotta be honest with yourself about. Sometimes people trade, they lose money, then they get down on trading or the market or ever taking a class and learning anything new again, but the fact is the thing they learned didn't work. Are there places out there that teach systems and strategies that don't work? Yes, absolutely yes. You have to pick and choose the right people to go to, all right? And you have to think in your mind, okay, very grounded about the whole philosophy of each system everybody's doing or anyone that you would listen to. Okay, this is the point of coming to a day like today or this week when you're coming to seminars and you're getting just a blip of lots of different people to try to get some information to see if that what that person says, what I'm saying here today resonates with you. You have to look at the foundation. What is the foundation for the system? Why are you doing it? Why is this person doing XYZ trade? Why are they shorting? Why are they going long? Okay. So what is the point of taking a class? The point is you want to learn something. Okay. And if you've never traded before, if you're brand, brand new and you've never traded in your life, you need a class as well. So you need a class if you've never traded. That's point one. And point two is you still need a class to learn a system if you're trading and losing and you don't have a system that works. Okay. While it is true that some classes and some systems do not work, full stop, it is also true that not every system or every class does not work. Some do. Okay. It is a misnomer for people to believe that no one can be successful in the market or do well. That's simply not true. Everybody goes through their ups and downs. I taught my system myself. It took me three years. But, you know, at the beginning, I did take a class. I did not learn how to make money in that class. And I did not learn a system in that class. But I learned very basic things that helped me develop my own system, which was important for me. So everyone has a journey and everyone has a process. Very similar to life. Very similar to whatever career you do right now, you know, whatever you happen to be doing. But the sooner you start, the whole idea is the sooner you will move ahead to achieving your goals. Now, at the beginning, I said we're going to talk about technical analysis. What is technical analysis? Technical analysis is looking at past price data to predict future price data. This is a chart. This is a daily chart. It's a chart of JWN. So I don't read fundamentals. I don't, I look and see what economic data comes out in the market, like we had report this morning, but I'm not making my trading decisions based on that. Why? You can have a good report in a company, a good earnings report, and the stock can drop or vice versa, okay? Very often that's already built into the price of the stock. This was a trade that we did. It was a day trade. This was a short this was an earnings gap that happened here back here on the 24th. So we shorted the stock at 1935 and we exited the stock at 1868. The profit if you took 3,000 shares was $2,010. I'm going to show you the one minute chart that we did where we did the trade in a minute. But I want to talk about here again, this is the daily chart of Nordstrom. I love Nordstrom, by the way. I love shopping there. They have a new store in New York opened a couple of years ago before COVID. One of the things that I liked about this was it had a gap. Now let's go back and look at the very basics of what is a gap. So again, first you look at the chart, you pull up the chart. This is a daily chart of Nordstrom. Stock closed up here. This was the night before the gap, okay? Was up here around 22 and change. Then on the following morning, so this is the 23rd of August, this is the 24th of August, the stock opened here snug as a bug, a little bit above 19, or right thereabouts, okay? So I looked at it, saw it, found it, down here's the volume, I knew the earnings were out, okay? And I rated it using my system to determine if I wanted to A, trade it at all, or B, go long it, or short it, okay? I determined that I wanted to short it, which is exactly what I did, and it worked and it fell, and actually, we did not do an option in this, but you could have done a swing trade to the downside, or you could have done a put, which is a short, okay, it's an option, because the stock fell. So actually, every day, since that day that we did the day trade, in here, it dropped all the way down into here. Broke 17, took it over here, actually was at 16 and change. That was a nice trade, it was a nice little trade. If you did it as a day trade here or anything else, Again, it's very important, very important to get momentum. Is this momentum? Yes. Why? This is, this is what I consider a low price stock, okay? 
50 cents a dollar. Again, however you want to do it, as you want to day trade, or you want to do it as a swing trade, or you want to do it as an option, okay? We did this as a day trade. Now let's look at the one minute. So this, you can even see this more so here, actually. This closed here, this is the one minute chart of JWN. This was in the morning, 9.30 into the open. This closed here, gap down, open, rally, boom. We shorted it, got the drop, got out. We could have actually got a better exit in this, but again, I tend not to stay in my trades all day. I had a quick exit in this, in and out fast in the morning, done. Again, what's another big thing that is important for traders? What else do you need to do? You have to book the money. You have to book it, book it, book it. I call it chunking it out. You can't hold things forever. Now, that doesn't mean if you're down in something, you don't wanna hold it to give it a chance to go. Could be a day trade, could be an option. I'm talking about if you're up, if you're up, if you're up, if you've met your goal for the day, if your goal for the day is $1,000, you would have made that here. If your goal for the day is $500, you would have made that here, okay? But again, this is what I call the money move. Boom, okay? Again, this was a gap, this was a short. Looking back again, what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is looking at past price data to predict future price data. What did we do with this? We shorted it, it was a gap down. Everybody with me? And any questions here? So getting back to what I was saying initially about having a strategy, being serious about trading, being serious about your own success, quite frankly, you need a foundation to day trade. You need a foundation, okay? You need an infrastructure for every entry and that's the strategy. The strategy is the core reason behind why you're even watching that stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry in it. Why was I even thinking? about doing JWN because it gapped, okay? And what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. That's what a gap is. There are gap ups or are gap downs. There will be gaps tonight. There will be gaps tomorrow morning. There are gaps pretty much every day in the market. An entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade has a foundation, a foundation supporting it, okay? So many stocks, on any given day, and this is the truth, this is very, very important, have no strategy to trade as a day trade. That is why on most days, stocks do not have a proper entry, there is no strategy. A lot of traders trend trade, guess what? They're getting killed this year. Killed, 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 why? Because people are looking at the market, saying the market's in an uptrend, then going long and it's not working. Then the market broke, then people are saying that they're gonna short because they're saying the trend of the market is in a downtrend and then it doesn't keep going down and then people are losing. If you are a trend trader, you have no business day trading. That is not what I do, not what I do at all. Sometimes I'm with the trend, sometimes I'm against the trend. Sometimes I'm with the market, sometimes I'm against the market. One has nothing to do with the other, okay? So on any given day, when you decide to trade, you have to have a proper entry and a foundation for why you're taking the trade in the first place. The strategy, okay, is the secure foundation for me. So it's like a house. You can't, you can't just throw a house up. You have to pour the foundation, pour the concrete, okay? So this is all the basics of what we're looking at here, what we're trying to actually get whatever we're choosing or making the choices ahead of time before we even put any money on, before we even take a trade, before we even place any risk. Because again, if you're gonna risk money in a trade, which you have to do in order to make money, you wanna be very, very picky, okay? You cannot just do everything also with the market, okay? So I decided to trade gaps a very long time ago because gaps have the good ones anyways have momentum and like i said earlier i realized very very early that you can take a decent size in something 500 a thousand shares two thousand shares whatever and if you get a big move you can make a lot of money with small risk meaning you could risk 500 dollars and make a thousand that to me is a pretty good trade it's basically a two to one so you're risking 500 and making double. Where are you gonna be able to do that? You can't do that in, in having a savings account, a money market, a long-term CD, even with interest rates going up. Yeah, dig the foundation, pour the concrete, the whole nine yards, all right? You've gotta have the structure. The engineering behind it has to be there or the whole thing's gonna fall apart. 
I live in Manhattan. I live in New York City. There's lots of construction going on right now. Actually, ever since the the COVID reopening, if you can even say that or whatever, construction's been booming in New York, okay? Buildings are going up like hotcakes, okay? Tons and tons of tons of construction in the city. Certain areas more than others. Hudson Yards are building down there. The traffic's terrible. You can drive by and see these huge, massive, massive, massive steel beams. The whole thing. You can look inside the buildings. All of that has to be there. All of that has to be there. Or what ha what happened? The building would fall over. The building would fall over and fall apart. And actually, one of the most interesting things about living in New York, I live in a building, I, I live very high up, is that the buildings are actually meant with the weather and wind for the structure of the buildings. I don't know if anyone here is an engineer. They're built so that the buildings actually move. So the most, the, the most tallest buildings that they have, the biggest tallest buildings are actually move <laughs> in the weather or the wind, which is a very, very interesting thing, but it's, it's the most supportive. So when you're risking your money, I don't care if you think it's a lot or you don't think it's a lot. Or you say, well, I'm just going to risk $100. Listen, that's $100. In today's day and age, $100 will barely buy you groceries for two people for the week. Food has gone up. Gas, $100 maybe would fill your car for the week. All right. Any amount of money you risk, small, medium, little bit. Okay, a lot, whatever. It's all important. It's very, 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 very important. And I find it interesting. Again, I've been teaching people now for 10 years, trading for 14. A lot of people just don't take trading seriously. They just don't take it seriously. Think about what you're doing. Don't take pot shots, okay? So for me, the my whole gap system is the foundation to the house for me to take the trade. So gaps are the support system or reason why you would enter a position for me. And the reason you're choosing to enter stock or the foundation for your entry should be because the stock is a quality gap. A stock gaps when the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple. So there are gaps almost every single day in the market. So it's basically the difference between the close and the open. If a stock closes at 50.01, and then it gaps and opens tomorrow morning at 50.05. Guess what? It is technically gapping up. Doesn't mean I'll necessarily go long it, but the fact is that is a gap up. If a stock closes at 50 and opens the next day at 49.90, okay, then technically speaking, that is what? It's a gap down, okay? Even though it's 10 cents, might I short it? Maybe. Again, I don't know. It depends. I go through my process and my system to do it. Well, I'm not doing anything unless I have conviction. That's for one, all right? And the only way I would have conviction is if it passed the rating system that I utilize and I use every single day, which again, goes back to the foundation of why you're taking the trade and what you're doing. Let's look at NVIDIA. Now, this was, actually this was last week. So here was the stock. Actually, let's go back over here. This stock actually had earnings this day. You may not have noticed that, it was kind of weird, but it actually did have earnings, it gapped down, and then it reversed. Then it fell here, 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 then it closed here, gapped down. Again, let's go over what is a gap. Here is the close, this is a daily chart in NVIDIA, this was, again, August 31st. The close was here, approximately around 150 and change, then a gap down here, snug as a bug, fell, dropped. Okay, this was September 1st. So whether you did it here, whether you did it here or here, any of these days, the stock was a short. Now we were talking about options. So I called an options trade in this stock, in NVIDIA. I sent the trade out at 7.46 in the morning. You, you can't enter an option at 7.46 in the morning. But I knew early in the morning on that day that this would work. So the day was Thursday, September 1st, and I called the 145 NVIDIA puts at expire 99. Now let's go back and look here. So did it work? Yes. Here's the drop, boom. You can take it, get in, get out, done, boom. 
Again, the idea is momentum. So the low in here with the day, I forget exactly what it was. It was a, it was a big drop though. If you didn't get out this day, you still had time to get out here. But again, the whole idea and purpose of trading is what? To get momentum. It's not long-term investing where you're taking it and holding it forever. If I call a trade, go back here. If I call a trade on the first, it expires the ninth, and it goes right away, and you're up 50%, 100% right away. No one said that you should hold it. The idea is chunking it out. You take it, you book it, you're out. Boom. Cost of this was $6. If you took an advanced trader risk and took 12 contracts, if the risk was $7,200, you could have sold it for $13. Profit was $8,400. Return on investment was 117%. This is in and out. Boom. Take it, get it, book it. You would have taken it into the open. You can't do options outside of the time frame. And you would have gotten the drop and got out. Any questions here about that? Don't ever take a trade if you don't have conviction. That's another thing too. So I use a system that gives me conviction. What is it? It's a rating system. This is what I teach in my two day class. It is a 26 point rating system. You may say that is a lot of things. Yes, it is. If I could create 126 things so that I would never, ever, ever lose, I would. I, for several years, I've had this system that I've been doing it, okay? And like I said, I haven't added anything to it, but it did take me three years to figure it out. I go through a checklist each and every morning where I will rate every gap I do, like Navinia, for example. If the gap rates 20 points or more per the 26-point system, then I will take the gap in the direction of the gap. What if it doesn't? Either I, A, don't do it at all, or you could reverse it. But I really usually do not do that. Now let's look at another one here. This was a day trade. This is Marvell. Stock closed here, gap down. This was earnings. Fell was a short. We shorted it here. 53.35. Shares was $1,500. Risk was 32.25. We added to this. Why? Because I really, really, really liked it. We added to it at 53.10, total position size. Again, this is a bigger risk. You could have taken less than this. You could have taken 100 shares if you want. Total shares was 3,000. The average cost was 53.22. This is a day trade, an equity trade on margin. The exit was 50.52. Profit was $8,100. It was a really, really nice trade. This was also a day, this was the 26th of August when the market was falling too. I'm going to show you the one minute. NVIDIA, I called in the morning on September 1st in the pre-market at 7.46 a.m. Uh, this one here, closed here, gap down. Again, this is a one minute. So you see over here where this was, and then you see where it opened. And then here's the whole shebang, okay? So all of this, you wanna make money doing what? Getting the momentum, the momentum is what? To the downside, to the downside. But you can see that some people were trying to go long in here. Why, because it was lifting. This is a, again, this is a one minute, that's a pretty fat green bar over there. It's a fat one over here too. We had a really, really nice entry in this. Then I saw that it was gonna break and we did the ad. But really, again, there were people that were long that, but I use the daily to help direct me with the rating system to tell me, no, 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 no. I do not wanna go long this, I want to short this. Okay, which is what we did and that worked. Okay, now we did the ad because it had the setup and by that point I also knew the market was with us too. Now getting back to what I was saying about trading and taking it seriously for a job, I think a lot of people look at it and they kind of get overwhelmed and they are living like in each day, like they have to make their whole goal for the week or the month or whatever in one particular day. People do that also for 
classes. Like they're like, oh my God, I've got to make the money back for this class in the first week or something, the first month or whatever. A lot of people just have a short term view of trading and I think it really hurts people, okay? For example, if you have a bad day, let's say you have a bad day trading, if you go hog wild trying to make up the losses from the bad day, say you have a bad day on a Monday, Tuesday then you go heavy into it to try to make up for the Monday loss, you may actually have a terrible day Tuesday too. Then you've dug yourself another hole. You should just get up every single day and live in that and do the right thing every day. So what if you don't get any good gaps that day? Then you don't do anything. What if you get two good gaps? Okay, you do them both. The whole idea is to live in the moment when you're trading, trading the gaps that you get or the trades that you get, whether they're options or day trades, because I think people get overwhelmed when they look at the bigger picture and say, oh my God, how could I possibly do this for a career? Look at it in a very small minutia time frame that you're doing it and go day by day by day, just like you would if you had a normal job. If you had a normal job, you'd get up and you'd work, okay? And you work tomorrow. And if you work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you'll get a paycheck the following week or bi-weekly or whenever you get paid, you know? You, you don't go to work on a Monday and expect to make your check for the whole week on a Monday. That's not normal, okay? So if you break it down and say, okay, I just want to make $2,500 a week, you could break it down like that. You could look at it as you're making $500 a day, for example, okay? Uh, maybe this helps people gather around it. No, I didn't use anything for, the, for, the, for that. I looked at the gap. I rated the gap per my system to determine that that rated more than 20 points, and therefore I shorted it because it rated over 20 points if you're talking about Marvell. No, it doesn't have anything to do with that percentages either. Jim is saying about it percentages. That's another mistake people make too. Again, if it was that easy, you could plug it into a system and go plop and plug it in and then you never have to think or use anything. It's 26 points, not 20, and I am not telling you those points here. Why? You would have to pay me to take my class to learn it. I don't give that information for free, number one. And number two, the class is 16 hours. I have another 30 minutes here to talk, but I would never give that information for free. You are paying me to learn it. You are paying me for the information. It took three years of my life to figure it out. You're here today to see if this is something that you're interested in, if it's something that you might wanna do, if you think that anything that I've said, it makes any sense at all. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Again, a lot of people have a short-term view of trading, and I think that is also one of the reasons why the, the Reddit chat rooms have taken off like a hot cake, because people are going there, number one, for free. They're not paying it at all. They're taking random ideas from strangers, which personally I don't think is a good idea, but some people have made a lot of money taking trades in those rooms. The very idea that some people have has created this motivation for people going to those rooms. But in the reality, most people, 99.9999% of the people that go to those rooms lose. Because those are the odds really in general trading the market to begin with. Do you follow me? When I'm looking for something, when I'm looking for the gap, very often we are against what the retail traders are doing. Uh, remember it was a couple weeks ago or a month ago now when that big pop happened in BBBY, that was one of the Reddit stocks. First of all, I don't trade the Reddit stocks because I look at technical analysis and the charts are all messed up. But there was a big pop in that from some guy that did an options trade and made several million dollars. He had a lot of money to invest to take that trade to begin with. It was an option, it was calls. But that chart overall was a terrible chart to go long in my opinion. If I had done anything in that at all, I would have shorted it. But again, I'm not trading BBBY because it's all messed up because of the Reddit, the Reddit stocks. But because some people have made a ton of money doing certain things, people want to go after it. Let's say you've been trading for 25 years. Let's say you've been losing for 25 years. Or overall, you're not really up. You make a little bit of money, but you, you pretty much are doing it on your own. You pay for a couple classes. You didn't learn how to trade really any system, but you're like back and forth. You write it off at the end of the year where you do your taxes and you're not doing it for a career. You hope someday you can do it. You'd like to make a lot of money, but you really aren't making anything to sustain yourself on it. What happens is over the course of time, then people lack commitment and they never really get anywhere with it and they never really do it. It's sort of like if you said, okay, you're gonna go on a diet. You're gonna go on a diet and you wanna lose 25 pounds. 
you could go on a diet and slowly, 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 slowly use 25 pounds over the next 12 months. That sounds great. It sounds very doable. But if you're like, oh my God, I have this fabulous thing that I have to go to for Thanksgiving. It's a really big party. It's a gala that I want to go to and I want to get in this dress and it's a size zero and I've got to lose 25 pounds. I'm going to go on a really strict diet for 30 days or 45 days so I can drop the weight really good to get in that size zero dress. I'd rather do that. That's my personality. That's my personality, actually. But the, the long and short of it is many people just can't see past the fact that they're trying to do this, trying to do this, trying to do this for so long, they don't want to make the level of commitment. The level of commitment involves time. I just got done telling you my class is 16 hours. The level of commitment involves money. I charge for my class too. It involves all of these things. And of course, what happens is, as years go on and people are trying to do it and they don't get enough where with it, they tend to go and want to do things where they hope and dream and pray that they'll make $100,000 in one trade in one week or something like that, like, like people have done in that GME and BBY stocks and things like that. I'm not saying that's impossible. People have done it. But I'm saying that's not reality. That's not reality. Reality is that we are living in an environment and an economy right now where interest rates are going up. I hate to say it, but they are. You can say we're not in a recession, whatever makes you feel good. Right now, the Fed thinks they're going to bring inflation down to 2% by the next 12 months. Probably not. They haven't been right about anything. Get in reality. Get grounded, even though it's maybe not what you want to hear. The reality is this is reality. You can do it, but it's going to mean time, and it's going to mean hard work, and it's going to mean commitment, and it's going to mean an investment. The sooner you come to realize that, the sooner you're going to get where you want to be, and the sooner you're going to have your goals. Do you know what I mean? That's the whole point. Um, what's repeatable? You lost me. What's repeatable? Um, I answered that question to somebody else about the points. You lost me there with what's repeatable. Matt. Anyways, the whole point is doing it, learning it, and doing it. Right, repeatable meaning if you learn it, the repetition is when you see the pattern or the setup in the gap rating, then you do it and you replicate it when you see it day after day after day after day after day. The, the whole idea is learning it. Once you learn it and you know it, then you can do it. Does that make sense? Um, what do you mean the breakaway? I don't know what you mean by breakaway. Somebody's asking about a breakaway. Um, here's the spy. Okay, we did this one here. This was 9-1. Actually, this was just last week. This closed here, this gap down. We shorted it. Again, this may not look like much. I still don't know what you mean by the breakaway. I don't know what you mean by the breakaway. We're shorting the gap. This closed here, this gap down. Then we got in, we did it, and we made money, and we got out. Entry is 392.35, shares was 1,500. This is an advanced trade at risk, 29.25. Ad was 392.25. Average price was 392.30. Total shares 3,000, exit 390.40. So this little, this little trade here, uh, maybe it doesn't even look like much. We made $5,850 and right there. And it doesn't even look like much, but we got in, got out at the right points. Here is the one minute. So here's where this closed the night before, then it opened here, okay? Then we got in it and again, the momentum is what? To the downside. This is a short, 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 short. Um, we do the market and we also do other things. Like we did Marvell, we did Nvidia. I mean, the market's had a lot of gaps this year. The market's had has a lot of gaps in general. The market has bullish gaps. The market has bearish gaps. Um, this just happened to be a bearish gap on September 1st. We don't necessarily do the market every day though, no, no. If there's a good gap in the market, I will do it. And I will say the one nice thing about trading the market is, again, the market moves. 
The market also has lots and lots and lots of volume. So all the things we do have volume, okay? Meaning you're gonna get filled in, you're gonna get filled out. The same thing with the options too. We don't trade any cheapy, cheapy stocks. We don't trade any low float stocks, okay? We are, we're not trading any penny stocks. The whole idea is we're looking for institutional money to trade with institutional money, not retail traders. That was where I, I went off on a tangent there, but that's I lost my train of thought. I was trying to say that earlier. I'm looking for things that I'm seeing that the institutional money is putting money in to push the stock up and go long and investing in it or selling, selling or shorting positions in it, big positions in it, okay? So everything that we do right out of the gate has volume, okay? And everything that we do has the potential, the potential for a large move. If you're doing something like a penny stock or something that costs a dollar or two dollars or whatever, you are you're you can't get a large move in that, okay? And getting back to what I was saying, one daily pick is really all you need to be successful. Why? Because if you do something like Marvell and you get a three dollar move in it, that's it. That's all you need. $1, $2, $3. Again, same thing with an option. It's the same idea. The idea is to focus on one strategy to be efficient and effective, okay? And again, the strategy, people are asking questions. That is what you will learn from me in the class. It's a two-day class. It is a paid class. That is not what we're doing here today. The whole idea of getting good is to learn a strategy that you can use and repeat and replicate over and over again for the rest of your life in any market conditions, whether it's bullish or bearish. Again, going back to what people go through when they are attempting to trade, they go through a process. The process is ups and downs. The process is wins and losses. And that process can emotionally, not just financially, but it can emotionally beat people up. The best thing that you can do for yourself, like I said, is get real with it and ask yourself your true level of commitment. Because I know from teaching people for 10 years and having the stock switch business, plus personally, personally going through what I did at the beginning of my trading career when I started in 2008 is that if you are committed, you can do it. You can. And just because you're not successful now doesn't mean that you can't be. If you should decide that you want to commit yourself to doing it and doing well, you can do it. And I try my best to help people. I really, really do. Make myself available to people every day in the live trading room or email them me and call me with questions, okay? But the only way for consistent money trading is getting the best pick and getting the momentum. Why? Because some trades lose, okay? If you, you can go back to the stats. David's taping this and see the beginning. We have some trades that lose. So if you take a trade and you're making 10 cents, that's not gonna cover the losses, okay? You need big ones. You've got to get some big ones. The big ones, the big moves, the momentum is going to make you money and it's going to cover the losses, okay? So again, how do I find the best pick? I use a rating system. This is the whole crux and the meat and potatoes of what I do. This is what I teach in the class. And there are thousands of gaps every day. So again, you got to find the best one and you need a proven system to find the best gap. So I created a system called the Golden Gap. It is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. If I go through gaps in the pre-market in the morning, whether it's 7.45 in the morning or 8 a.m. or six o'clock when I get up, if I don't see any gaps or nothing rates per my system, we do not trade that day. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. I may do nothing. I may do three things. I don't know, okay? I have no idea what I'm gonna get because it's not tomorrow morning. I know KR reports earnings tomorrow morning. It's Kroger, the grocery store. I don't know how it's gonna gap. I'm not in any trades in that because I don't know how it's gonna gap. And not only that, I don't know if it's gonna be a good gap, okay? I don't know if it's gonna rate per my system over 20 points. Uh, somebody's asking, is a 26-point system, can it be set up automatically from the trading platform? I don't do that. If you want to input the system to do that yourself, you can do that yourself. I don't do that. I'm trading live. I'm going through it. I take my time. If that's something that you want to do after the class, that is something you can do. That's not something that I do. Again, everybody has to kind of use whatever they need that's going to work for them. You know what I'm saying? Like some people do options and they don't like to day trade. The day trades they find and move too fast. Whereas some people are the opposite. Some people don't like options, 
okay? They don't want to have to sit and watch and watch and watch something. They want to do the day trade, be in and out in five minutes. Use whatever works for you. It's the same system either way, okay? You apply it yourself how you want to after you learn it. So the whole thing is it teaches you a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big moves in the day, early confirmation of a bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward. Uh, as far as the win ratio, somebody's asking, the win ratio, I, we again, we're doing two things. The options are a newsletter. The win ratio for the newsletter year-to-date is 77% we are having a phenomenal year for options. Now, the reason for that is you have more time in the options. For my day trades for the year, I think I'm about 70%. I haven't added it up since September 1st. So my win ratio for day trades is slightly less than options. We're having a higher win ratio for options this year. Of course, the year isn't over yet than day trades. And as far as that goes, it means I might call it trade. Actually, let's, I'll show you this NVIDIA. I don't put this one in here, but this is a good example. The day that this had earnings here, that's not the option I have in here. It's the one in the first. I watched this today trade. I didn't do it. If I had, I would have lost. So I would have lost in it never worked right but I did call an option in it I called a put I held it trade was completely down and then it went on to work <laughs> because I had a whole week to get the move do you follow me so this is like I'm just setting up the scenario because someone asked the reason we're having a higher win ratio and options and day trades this year is because, again, we didn't do this, but if I had, I'm just pointing out the scenario, sometimes this is what occurs. Sometimes something doesn't work as a day trade, and then it does as an option. And this would have been a good example. I didn't do that, though, as a day trade. I saw pretty early on it was not going to work right on the day, but then it did in the option. So that's a good example. So... When you take a trade, say you have every 10 trades, you got to figure, you know, two or three are going to lose. When you're sizing yourself, when you're choosing your risk, whether it's $500 a trade, $1,000 a trade, three grand a trade, whatever you're going to risk, you have to pick and choose and know that you're going to have an average of two to three losers. Again, it's no matter how you want to do it. But getting back to the confirmation of the time point, I am still looking for the confirmation early between 9.30 and 10, even if I'm doing an option. I would like the confirmation early that I can get a big move, that I'm going to get the follow through. And then, of course, with the day trades, I'm looking with, for precise entries in the one minute and a good risk to reward. But the whole philosophy behind the system is to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. That's how you make money. Again, you got to get the direction right. Um, I'm doing options for the weeklies. That's it. We're not doing any long-term options and we're not doing any leaps. I also do bullish gaps too. Uh, we did a uh, we did calls this year in CBX. Um, I'm not in anything with that right now. CBX is Chevron. It's an oil stock. We've done several options in that this year. We've done several day trades in that this year. They've all been longs. So that is something that I have gone long this year. We did it. We did an option in Alta. Alta broke out yesterday. Alta was a call. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. We've gone long, but we have gone long this year. And I will go long. I'm not against going longs. I prefer to short. I prefer to short. Why do I prefer to short? I feel like shorting gives me an edge. A lot of people don't know how to short. Even though people are trying to get in the bandwagon of the downside right now, people really have in their mind that June 16th was a low for the market for the rest of the year. And people think the rest of the year in the market is, has an upside. While that could be true, it very well could be true. It's neither here nor there for me. Unless you're in something like a retirement account or a long-term option like we were talking about leaps, which I don't do. I don't do leaps, but I'm saying who cares if the market rallies between now and the end of the year? Who cares if it drops? If you're an active trader, if you're an active day trader, if you're an active options trader like me, then you're in and out getting the momentum and making the money in both directions, depending on whatever we get on the day. You know what I'm saying? It, it Trying to predict where the spy is going to be by 1231 is like saying to me, okay, 
um, you know, so-and-so is going to win the presidential election in 2024. First of all, you don't even know who's running. And second of all, how on earth have you even knew who's running? How would you know who's going to win? I mean, like, do you know what I mean? So it's like the Fed trying to predict what they think inflation is going to be in 12 months from now. They're, they're not going to get it right. It's impossible. Okay. So you make money right now. And as an active trader, you're living in the moment. So we're looking to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame on the one minute chart, but we're looking at the large tar chart for the accuracy and the gap for the direction. That allows us to get good trades with a high risk to reward. We usually have three to five gaps a day in earning season, three to five gaps a week in not earning season. Everything is based on the points. Again, if you sign up for the options newsletter, you're getting the trades. I'm writing the gaps. That's a subscription service. If you sign up for the class and want to learn it, I'm calling the trades in the live room. But it's the idea of having a checklist. The checklist is a plan of action. The checklist tells you what pick to do or tells you don't do any picks. Having that focus and having it set up in the pre-market helps you. Do I forecast gaps? No. No, I don't. How could I possibly do that? I have no idea where the gap gaps where we gap tomorrow in the market. I don't know. No, it's like I just said KR. KR is going to have earnings. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm not getting in stuff before it gaps. No. It's like saying you know what Apple earnings are going to be in three weeks from now. And even if you did, you don't know how the stock's going to react because they don't always react exactly how it's going to be. We do not, I do not get in a position before the earnings. No, the big bucks are if you're in a trade and it gaps in your direction. But that's not predicting the gap. We're already in it. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyways, what is it about gaps that makes them so profitable? Again, momentum. Large institutional money are creating the moves. That's what makes the gap in the first place. It's buying and selling or shorting. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you're playing it. Gaps are an event. Again, getting back to the foundation. They create a sense of urgency. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You have to do it now, whether you're getting in or getting out. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. Okay, this, uh, somebody just said something about, um, you know, doing something with overnights. Again, we sometimes get a trade that is a big trade where we're already in a trade, for example, and it goes overnight. This back here, this was the middle of August. So I called a put and then this gap down further here. This was a good example. We did Twitter too before the news of Twitter came out when Musk was going to dump the deal. We were already in it then. That's not predicting something that you don't know is going to happen. We were already in the train, okay, for another setup, if that makes any sense. But yes, if you're in something and it goes in your direction, it can be very profitable. That can happen to the downside here or it could happen to the upside. But you can't predict that this is going to happen. You're in it because you're in it to begin with. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you're on the newsletter, you're going to get those trades. Is that what we're doing every single day, though? No. We're getting the trade and we're getting the play that we're doing at the moment that we're doing it. And then we let it play out. And the whole idea is to book money. The whole purpose and the whole idea is to book money. And again, momentum is what makes gaps so profitable. Here again was the Marvell. Fell down in here. This was that day on the 26th. I remember that day that was a Friday. That was the day the market fell a lot. Any questions here? I'm going to try to flip through to the end. But, you know, your brain, okay, is very powerful. And once you learn how to read charts, once you learn how to read with technical analysis, it's really going to make such a huge difference to you because you're not going to be set off by news or anything that could affect you, even economic data. You're going to look at the price. You're going to, you're going to rate it, and you're going to go with the rating. Okay, the whole idea if you want to do this is making extra money. Whether you want to do it full time or part time is totally up to you. But I do think it's important for people to have a system. And again, I've been teaching people for 10 years. If you're trading without a system, you're basically trading blind. And in my opinion, if you're trading or you're not using technical analysis, you are trading blind. You can't take pot shots when you look for something. The reason I choose gaps is because they have big moves. It just makes a lot of sense to do them. I also like the fast setups. 
And again, I teach a class on it that I teach once a month. The next class is September 17th and 18th, which is not this weekend, but next weekend. You know, throughout the years, as I've taught people, I, I know a lot of things that different people do. One of the reasons why I picked to do GAPS in the first place when I started out a long time ago was I really feel like a lot of people don't understand GAPS and don't do them well. And so I've created a niche for myself in doing them, not just GAPS alone, but also the idea of shorting. And you can make money shorting in a bullish market and you can make money shorting in a bearish market. We are not necessarily doing the market every single day. You have to have conviction when you trade. For me, it's the checklist. And then um, I have some testimonials here. Yes, I do bullish gaps and I do bearish gaps, yes. Uh, there was something else I was gonna say. We were talking about forecasting. Um, these are just some testimonials from people. So anyways, if you'd like to learn what I know, or if you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you'd like a trial for the room, you can come in tomorrow, but you gotta email me for the trial. I think it's important for people to learn what to do. Again, you will learn a whole system to trade. The class is all day Saturday and all day Sunday, September 17th and 18th. You would learn the 26 points and you would learn the entries and you would learn the targets. The class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. And again, you will learn my 26 point system on professional bearish gaps. The class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. It's online. You must email me for sign up forms. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm doing a birthday special because my birthday is in the next couple of days, actually. And if you sign up by Tuesday, September 13th, you will receive the live trading room and the options newsletter free to the end of the year with the class, which is on the 17th and 18th. Again, class tuition is $69.99. Everyone pays the same thing. I do bonus offers like this to try to help people get started so they can be in the room, train, get the trades, and get the options newsletter. Earnings season starts in about a month, a month from now. And that's not till October. So this gives you time to get in, learn, and then get acclimated and start trading. Day trading is where we're doing the equity trades, where we showed you the trades in Marvell. The options is something different. We're just buying straight calls or puts and selling them. We're not doing fancy dancy options types of strategies. And again, the class is online. Nope, gap fills don't work. Even though you could say, well, that worked. No, it doesn't. Every once in a while, something works. Otherwise, again, something would be 100%. The whole idea of gap fills does not work consistently to make money. Again, getting back to what I said at the beginning of the program here today, in order to make money in the market, in order to be successful, in order to hit these kind of numbers that we're hitting here with these types of win ratios and these types of profits, you have to have more winning trades and losing trades. While sometimes you can do what people call a gap fill why sometimes it might work it does not work consistently that's something very important that you need to know if you're doing that every day from january to december you will lose i think that is one of the reasons why people shy away from doing gaps they get hurt in things when they do them and they don't work sometimes they even do them overnight or one of the guys in here said he you know he's predicting gaps that's that's a losing scenario too you can't do that you have to read the price. You have to read the price. Let it do its thing. Then you read it. Then you prep in the morning. Then you do it. And you do it into the open. Listen, thanks so much for letting me talk today. Thanks so much, David, for having me. Anyone interested, email me. If you want to trial for tomorrow, email me too. Thanks for having me.